Hi, my name is Esther for David White Services, and today I want to talk about filters. When you're purchasing a heating and cooling system, it's one of the decisions that you have to make. When my dad first started his business here 35 years ago, indoor air quality was not a conversation that people had, and neither really was efficiencies of heating and cooling system. Today, with the pollutants in the air, indoor air quality has become very important to people, as has efficient heating and cooling equipment. So choosing the right filter is essential to having the home environment that you want. When you are talking about buying a car, one of the things you look at is MPG, miles per gallon. Similarly, when purchasing a filter, one of the things you should look at is MERV, Minimum Efficiency Reporting Value. This is a way of finding out how many particles a filter will get rid of. So, if it's 1, the ranking system works from 1 to 16. 1, it'll keep out small pebbles. This kind of filter is on the lower end, below a MERV 4. And as you can see, it's really, really thin, and it does not keep out any of the air stuff that we think of, like mold, bacteria, smoke, pet dander, dust. It'll just go straight through this. So this is a MERV under four. Um, so is this one, which is a washable filter. You can see that you can see right through that. So anything under MERV four is going to be a filter that just really is trying to keep really big things like pebbles and animals out of your heating and cooling system. The next kind of filter up is this one, and this is going to be more in the MERV 5 to 8 range. It's thin, but you can see it's a lot thicker. The actual filtering material is a lot thicker. So this is going to keep out more of those types, but it probably won't keep out um, much bacteria or any smoke. The next one up is one of these, and this is going to be more like MERV 10, 11 through 13. And you can see it's really thick, lots of filtering area here. So it is going to keep out even tobacco smoke to a certain degree, pet dander, dust mites, that kind of thing. A lot of those will be filtered out with this. You don't really want to go too much higher than a MERV 13 with the traditional filtering system because then the actual airflow into your heating and cooling system can be restricted and will reduce airflow and the length that your heating and cooling lasts will be smaller because the blower has to work that much harder. So those are kind of the basics of how MERV can help you in choosing the type of filtering system that you want. So one of our filter companies gave us this. It's um, lithograph dust or film and it's what they used to put on newspapers. It's a very, very fine, it's finer than sand. And what they do, they throw it on the newspapers to dry the ink very quickly. And it would just come off as just dust. Anyways, it's great for filter presentations because what we have here is a MERV 13, a MERV 11, and a MERV 7. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a spoonful in this filter. And then tap the filter see how much goes through a MERV 7 filter. You can see it made quite the mess there. Now, to show you the efficiency of the next filter up, this is a MERV 11, standard David White Services filter. Put about the same amount of dust in this spoon. Put it on the filter. not nearly as much. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a MERV 13, which is much higher rated, catches things like mold and bacteria. I'm going to go ahead and just heap on a bunch of this dust. And we're going to put it on this filter here, and down in one of the fleets good. And it's going to be on this very vigorously for a long time.
As nice as it is to know how many particles will be filtered out of your system, most people make a lot of decisions based on money. So the question is, how much is it going to cost me? For a cheap filter that's under a MER4 and doesn't filter very well, it's going to cost you about $2.88 per filter. That might seem like a great deal, but it's really recommended that you change these once a month. And so that equals an annual cost of $34.56. Which, as you can see, if you go up to a MERV 7 or 8, the local hardware price is about $8.99, but they only cha get changed once every three months, which means your annual cost is $35.96. That's very similar to the annual cost for a cheap filter. For me personally, however, I've made the decision to go up to a MERV 11. Here at David White Services, we charge $25 for these, and we recommend you change them about every 6 to 12 months, depending on your home's air quality. So the annual cost will be somewhere between $25 and $50 for a better filter. If you go up to a MERV 13, your annual cost will be between $35 and $70. Here at David White Services, we have a biannual sale where you buy two filters and get one free. So even if you change it twice a year, you can take this MERV 11 cost down to around $37, which you see compares beautifully with the MERV 8 for a better filter system. So now that you've made your decision of what kind of filter you're going to buy, I'm going to assume that you chose to get one of our filters that's a MERV 11 or 13. If that's the case, this is what will be installed down near your furnace. This little unit, it's metal and it's installed between the furnace and the cold air return. The cold air return is the air coming back into your furnace to be conditioned, to be filtered, and to be either turned hot in heating season or cold in cooling season. Because you want your furnace working at its peak efficiency, you also want the air to be at its cleanest point when it hits the furnace. That way you're keeping all of those particles out of it. And just like you don't want bacteria, mold, dust, pet dander in your lungs, you also don't want it in that furnace. So when you open this up to change it, you'll see that there's arrows here. You always want those arrows to be pointed towards the furnace. That means that the airflow coming in to be conditioned is at its cleanest point when it hits your furnace. And to change it, you simply take the dirty filter out and put the clean one in. Just one final step of something that you will want to do. When you first get your new filter, you can see on here it says check every three months. You don't have to do that forever. But because conditions vary in homes, how many pets you have, how many kids you have, whether you live on a dirt road or not, that's how often you should change your filter. It varies house by house. So when you first get the filter, you want to write the date on here with the Sharpie and then check it every three months that first year. That way you'll know if in your home you should be changing this filter every six months, nine months, or 12 months. Thanks for taking the time to view our little presentation of how to make a good choice on filtering the air quality in your home. We hope that you'll come to David White Services for all of your heating and cooling needs. See you soon!